Calling off the second presidential debate was important. Absolutely the right decision. Disappointing, but not surprising. We need to make the case over the next several weeks of how dangerous Donald Trump is for America. What I'm looking for is whether Donald Trump is able to really change the narrative of this election. Donald Trump is the underdog, but that's a role that he's used to. My name is Danielle Moody, and I am the host of the podcast Woke AF Daily. I am looking for a Biden-Harris win come November 3rd. I'm Esha Monk. I am a political scientist and a scholar of populism. I'm Daniel McCarthy. I'm the editor of Modern Age. I'm a conservative Republican, and I'm hoping for Donald Trump to win. All right, so let's bring them in, our U.S. political panel, Daniel McCarthy, Danielle Moody, and Yasha Monk. So, surprise, COVID came calling to the White House, and now, obviously, there's no debate this week. So let's start then uh, with the political impact of the last 10 days on the landscape. Yasha, what are your instincts on that? Uh, well, it was a little hard to predict because it obviously was a curveball, but by now we have some data in, and it looks as though Biden has continued to uh, widen his lead in the last week and the last 10 days. And a lot of the reason for this is that Americans were already nervous about Donald Trump's handling of the coronavirus and uh, the way in which the White House has basically ended up hosting a super spreader event has made that more salient, has made people think Donald Trump is not taking this virus seriously enough. The White House has not taken precautions seriously enough, whether in its own operations or in the way that it has tried to combat it uh, around the country. And yet, D Danielle, I is it your sense as a Democrat that the, that the fact of the president getting COVID changed something? I mean, I honestly don't think that him getting COVID-19 changed anything. I think that there were hopes initially that he would take the virus a lot more seriously, that maybe he would talk about a national mask mandate or actually wear a mask himself on a regular basis. And none of those things have happened. Um, but I do think that it was important that the debate was canceled because we need to model safety uh, to the American people and to the world. And having Donald Trump be in person with Joe Biden and still possibly contagious, not a great idea, not even just for the former vice president, but for everyone, all of the tens of, you know, thousands and not tens of thousands, but tens of people that it takes to put together an event like this would all be at risk in an enclosed uh, theater. So I think that it was important that it was canceled. So talking about the former vice president, Daniel, as a Republican, is it your sense that Joe Biden navigated the last 10 days well or, or not so well? It's tricky to do when your opponent's ill. Well, he had a um, very good news cycle. The fact that Donald Trump was ill was something that created new doubts for Americans. On the other hand, the president's speedy recovery is something that now may create a rebound effect in, uh, on the president's uh, benefit. We have, um, we have all long talked about minds being cemented at this point, but we also keep hearing the president being acutely aware of these key voters he needs to get. So let, let's have a little listen to him uh, at a rally last night. Suburban women, they should like me more than anybody here tonight because I ended the regulation that destroyed your neighborhood. I ended the regulation that brought crime to the suburbs and you're going to live the American dream. Okay, so Daniel, that's his case for the suburban women and for the suburban women in your world, what are they weighing now about Donald Trump? Um, I actually think that right now the uh, biggest news for Donald Trump regarding suburban women is coming out of the Amy Coney Barrett hearings, where we're seeing now by about a 17-point margin Americans favor the confirmation of uh, Amy Coney Barrett as a justice. And uh, she is a great role model for married women, for uh, mothers, uh, and for women in general who want to see a woman on the Supreme Court who is going to uh, be yet another highly uh, accomplished uh, justice, one of the leading figures perhaps uh, on the bench in the next generation. And do you think, Daniel, that that will supersede any concerns uh, suburban women might, might be having about Donald Trump? I think it's something that will really, really assure a lot of, um, especially Republican suburban women who've been a little bit uh, wary of uh, Donald Trump personally. The fact that uh, Donald Trump is able to deliver on uh, key concerns for conservatives, for Republicans, and for women is something that's actually going to redound to his benefit very well. Okay, so Danielle, if, if Trump knows that he needs to reach out to suburban women, who is the group that, that Joe Biden must appeal to right now? 
I think that Joe Biden is doing a great job appealing to everyone who is sick of living in chaos and anxiety and stress and sickness um, and economic turmoil. Joe Biden isn't just signaling out one particular group. He's signaling out all Americans who are exhausted by this administration and, fr and frankly, sick, right? We have 8 million people in the country that are sick. Um, while Donald Trump, you know, thanks God for his COVID uh, diagnosis, there are over 215,000 families that have had to bury their family members. Um, and so I think that Joe Biden is doing a good job of reaching out to those people who are over a Trump administration um, and a Trump regime. Wouldn't he have had them anyway? I think that, you know, the reality is, is that a lot of people were on the fence about Joe Biden. He wasn't the most exciting candidate. But I think that as time goes on and we see what we are up against, I think more and more people are not just voting against Donald Trump, but they are voting for a Biden-Harris ticket. And so I think that he's been doing a very good job of reminding the American people of just how stable, how thoughtful, how analytical he is and what they are in for, what they would be in for in a Biden-Harris administration, which would be a lot of ease uh, coming off of a climate of disease. So wanting to vote and actually doing it are always two different things. Yasha, we always hear that that turnout is so key. And I think looking at the most recent numbers so far, 10 million people have already voted. This time in 2016, it was just perhaps 1 million. There's this temptation to say that means voter turnout will be huge. But is that what you read into it? Um, it's very difficult to tell in the middle of a pandemic. We just don't have the data from previous years to go by because the situation is so different. It looks as though a lot of people are enthusiastic about voting. A lot of Trump's most uh, devoted supporters want to make sure he gets another term. But a very broad coalition of people is turning out um, to vote for Joe Biden. And certainly I, I think the early numbers suggest that there's going to be high turnout. But there's an interesting demographic story that I think the last couple of comments didn't quite tell, which is that there was a very clear story in 2016. So um, younger people of color voted for Hillary Clinton and uh, older white voters voted for Donald Trump. Well, what's happened in the last four years is very interesting, which is that Trump has actually uh, gained ground a little bit among uh, younger voters and among people of color. And Biden has hugely gained among older voters, um, among white voters. And so actually, in some ways, the electorate is depolarizing a little bit by age and by race, mm. which goes against the narrative we tend to tell. And it's a very interesting part of the story right now. If Biden wins, it's not because he's mobilizing the, deba the base. It's because he is winning back a lot of people who voted for Donald Trump in 2016. All right. All of you, Yasha Monk, Danielle Moody, Daniel McCarthy, thanks very much. Maybe there'll be a debate next week. Uh, we'll see you if there is.